So this is my fourth case of immigration refusals series that I'm presenting to you. The purpose is to learn from the mistakes that people did and uh, find out if I can improve my own application so that not to get a refusal. Uh, the information is very clear. It's from the Federal Court of Canada, uh, posted on October 8, 2019. Uh, Mr. Justice uh, uh, Caffey, uh, names uh, present on the left. Uh, the docket number and citation number is also present on the top right. If you want, you can copy and paste and do the search on Google and find out uh, the whole case on your own so that you can read it, download it, and print it, analyze it on your own. Uh, let's take a look who is involved here. Anupam Gupta and Minister of Citizenship Immigration, of course, and uh, Judgment Reasons. Uh, what is this case about? Uh, let's take a look one by one. Overview. Mr. Gupta claims that the refusal of his application for TRV was unfair and unreasonable, which is a visitor visa. He asserts that he was not given a fair chance to respond to a concern about misrepresentation. And this has resulted in improper adverse credibility findings. He also argues that the refusal was unreasonable given his family ties to India, financial status, prior travel history, and that it was based on stereotypes, skepticism, and discarding of favorable evidence. So the synopsis of what the judgment said here is although I agree that Mr. In line number two, although I agree that Mr. Gupta did not have a fair opportunity to respond to the misrep concern, that concern was not the basis of refusal. It was not relied on by the visa officer, and there's no indication that the officer made any credibility findings based on or it or at all. Rather, the refusal was based on assessment of limited evidence in the application regarding economic conditions, travel history, financial status, family ties, and travel history, which I have highlighted. Mr. Gupta had an onus to provide all relevant information to satisfy the visa officer that he would leave Canada and it would stay. The officer was not satisfied of this and made a finding falling squarely within her mandate. That conclusion was reasonable. So, of course, the judge does not agree with Mr. Gupta's assertion. And we will see, this is a 20-page uh, document, but we will see uh, what is going on in different um, purviews and, and try to understand. But I've, I have highlighted in advance, I've done my research and I've highlighted so that you can get the gist of the, of the problem. So let's take a look slowly, uh, one by one. Line number four. Mr. Gupta applied for TRB online on December on sorry October 21 2016 he stated that the purpose of the visit was tourism and that he planned to visit a friend in Edmonton that's my city between December 7th and January 15 2017 this close to about uh, 45 days the application indicated that Mr. Gupta had $7000 available of his stay and he has been retired for at least 10 um, you know, 10 years. As required, Mr. Gupta's application included a family information form. In completing this form, Mr. Gupta gave information about himself, but did not refer to either his mother and father, which he conceded at the, at the hearing was an oversight. His application did include a copy of information page from his own passport, which gives the names of his father and mother. And there's a lot of information, but that page does not give parent state, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Um, so what I want to show you here is, I'll uh, just go from here, from here. Mr. Gupta indicated in a supplementary affidavit filed on this application that his parents are alive, that the address on the passport page is also his parents' address. However, this information was not available in the application and was not before the officer. I do not know whether parents' information is a part of the decision here, but the judge made a note that this was not provided at the time the visa officer was looking at this application. Line number six, with respect to prior travel to Canada, the application stated that Mr. Gupta had applied and received a visitor visa to enter Canada and that his last visa issued in 2005, so he already had a visa uh, previously in 2005, and it expired a year later. Mr. Gupta's application also included travel history information including information that you obtained from CBSA in response to request and uh, 
access to information showing travel to Vancouver in May 2005 and 2006. Mr. Gupta included a copy of boarding pass at that time that showed that he flew from Vancouver to London on 30th October, but with no year of travel. We don't know what was the year of, maybe I hope it's that year. But Mr. Gupta advised in submission that his boarding pass was from this departure from Vancouver to uh, in, in October 2006 after a six-month stay. Pointing the code to a stamp in his passport showing re-entry to India on November 2nd, 2006. While this may make sense, it is not an explanation that was before the visa officer in this Mr. Gupta's application, and the application cannot be said to have shown that Mr. Gupta was in Canada through late to the... So even though he, he showed some information that he was there in that year, uh, this was not presented in, in the current application. The visa officer did not have this uh, information completely that to show that he actually was there for six months in 2006 on a previous uh, visa travel. All right, so question number seven. These travel dates are relevant since Mr. Gupta wished to this application to be processed under the CAN Plus program. CAN Plus program is a program that provides timely process of visas for national certain countries who have traveled to Canada or U.S. in the past 10 years. Information before the court suggested that CAN Plus program has or had different requirements for nationals of different countries, but the court accepts that the 10-year travel period was applicable to India. Applications that qualify under CAN Plus program can expect a shorter processing time and require less information regarding financial circumstances. All right, section B. Uh, line number eight, Mr. Gupta's application was treated by officers in the visa section in New Delhi and took some time to process. Unknown to Mr. Gupta, in November 9, 2016, an officer from the New Delhi High Commission requested additional information from authorities in the United States. Many people don't know that uh, Canadian government can get uh, information from U.S. about your application and get all the related, you know, anything that has happened to do with you in the US they can get it from you without even letting you know that they will and sometimes we we don't tell them but they will find out the request was apparently triggered by a notation related to a removal order as it read please provide detail refusal reasons here I'm just going to highlight this please provide detail refusal reasons pursuant to code 92a ordered removal or departed while order outstanding also provide the passport number and the photo if available the source of underlying notation is not clear on the record, although the GCMS notes indicate that the information was requested regarding applicants' removal from the USA. So there's a likelihood that maybe he was removed from USA. We don't know what is the real story. We don't know, but you know, you never know what things come up when you file for application. So it's important to understand the whole background of the client history. Number nine. No response to request for information was received from the U.S. for a number of months, so it appears that on March 10, 2017, the request was cancelled and a fairness letter was sent to Mr. Gupta. The letter advised Mr. Gupta that the immigration officer had concerns that he had misrepresented his response to the question. And now we're getting the real, real story. Have you ever been refused a visa permit, denied entry, or order to leave Canada or any country? And gave him an opportunity to respond. Let's see what he said. In line 10, Mr. Gupta responded to the fairness letter on March 19, 2017, indicating that the officer had not disclosed the basis of misrep concern, asking that the officer release any extrinsic information that had led to concern, and referring to this court decision in Guerrero versus Canada in 2015, FC 1048. Uh, I don't want to go into that uh, case right now, but just, uh, just let it be mentioned for now. Mr. Gupta heard no further so followed up with high commission in in september 2019 this led to exchange in with the high commission recent is march 10th letter and mr gupta recent is march 19 response no further information was provided and high commission sent no further response to march 19 uh, 2017 letter on february uh, 26 2018 mr gupta's trv application was refused blah 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 yeah, i don't want to go read the whole thing let's jump to third 13 uh, the form said the following statements. Please note the only grounds have been checked out, blah, blah, blah. There's, there's a lot of grounds here. 
but uh, as, a, as a summary, you have not satisfied that you would leave Canada at the end of your stay as a temporary residence. That's a little summary. I don't want to go and read each and every line, but just want to highlight what is the main points here. Uh, okay, second ground was I'm not satisfied that you have sufficient funds, including income or, income or assets. That's, that's fine. Uh, let's let us uh, this is also this is the notes uh, line number 16 is the procedural notes that, uh, that the, on the GCMS that the officer wrote and uh, let's take a look at something else okay so here we are at line number 27 I have missed a lot of lines in between because they were uh, not relevant to what I want to share with you uh, this is uh, uh, this is this is important for you to know on line no, number 27 mr. Gupta's challenge to the refusal mr. Gupta raises a number of challenges to the refusal which in a sense amount to submissions that uh, what is a the decision was unfair as a basis of concern for race in the fairness letter and make extrinsic information all right the officer implicitly made adverse credibility findings arising for the concern in the fairness letter we don't know that's his allegation let's take a look the officer's refusal of the TRV was unreasonable. This is many people say that their visa was denied unreasonably. As it referenced, elements of the Indian economy, which has improved since the mystic of the last visit, gave insufficient value to his perfect track record of respect to immigration requirements on prior visit to Canada, relied on generalization and stereotypes regarding his family ties, and failed to apply the can plus program exemption regarding financial evidence I don't think so but uh, let's see what the judge says mr. Gupta is also seeking cost Wow he's seeking cost because it took unduly long process time it uh, 16 months rather than six business days uh, I do not know whether that's long enough but of course uh, but the judge did not give him any cost about this uh, uh, about this litigation cost all right, so I'm going to uh, jump down to analysis and fairness, uh, and this is where where the analysis begins. Line number 29. As Mr. Gupta points out, this court has confirmed that where a visa officer has concerns about the credibility of an applicant, fairness, uh, the principle of fairness, impose a duty to provide them with an opportunity to respond to the concerns. And there's uh, there's a lot of things. Maybe I should jump ahead and go to the meat of the thing that I want you to understand. So I've jumped uh, directly to part C, which is starting from line 37. Refusal of the application. Mr. Gupta raises a number of concerns regarding the reasonableness of the officer's refusal. I'm not satisfied that any of them individually cumulatively show the decision to be un uh, unreasonable. So this is the opinion of the judge in this federal uh, judicial review. I'm not satisfied that any of them individually show the reason, decision to be unreason, uh, unreasonable uh, let's let's parse this one by one mr. Gupta criticizes the officers consideration of economic conditions and employment prospects in home country noting that he had received a visa and returned from visiting Canada earlier when the Indian gross domestic product was lower and the unemployment rate higher However, the assessment of factors for the purpose of TRV is not a comparative exercise to the results of an earlier application, of course. So what happened in the previous application, it has no bearing on this one. So, you know, it is uh, futile to mention that he came back when the GDP of India was lower and unemployment was high. It has no connection with this application. This uh, this assessment, this is it is an app assessment by the officer based on evidence and application before them. So the new application is a new application. It has nothing to do with what happened in the in the past application. Nor is a single factor to be considered in isolation from the entirety of the application. While the officer does not provide detailed analysis on the issue, there is no obligation to do so in the context of the TRV application. I cannot say it was unreasonable for the officer to consider economic and employment conditions in India as a factor of assessment of it has nothing to do I mean I can say you know they don't I mean whether the, whether a lot of jobs being created in India or the GDP is going up or not it has nothing to do with your TRV application I do not know why Mr. Gupta even brought this up this is just a distraction Mr. Gupta asserts that the officer failed to provide a clear rationale for his travel history, disincentivizing his return. 
There's no indication that the officer reached this conclusion at all. The officer referred to Mr. Gupta's travel history, but did not itemize it on the form as a matter of concern. Says anything, it was a positive factor. Notably, the evidence of prior travel history filled with the application was modest and certainly did not cry out for extensive discussion. The officer's brief treatment of this factor was not unreasonable. That's fine. 40. Similarly, the officer's assessment of Mr. Gupta's family ties was reasonable. As noted above, Mr. Gupta failed to provide information in the application regarding the parents in India for which the officer cannot be faulted. The onus was on Mr. Gupta to put forward complete information sufficient to satisfy the officer that he would leave Canada. Of course, which is, which is obvious. I also see no evidence that the officer engaged in stereotyping alleged by Mr. Gupta regarding his family status and in particular his child, childlessness. Rather, the officer appropriately considered his family ties as a factor in assessment of whether he she would be satisfied she would leave Canada. Mr. Gupta also disagrees uh, with the officer's concern regarding funds, including income or assets. He believes $7,000 is enough. And the officer misadjudicated his file by failing to apply the campus program. All right. So uh, here's, here's what it is. However, I'm just going to highlight this. Uh, However, given the absence of documents and information regarding the 2000, 2006 travel to Canada, Mr. Gupta's application did not contain adequate information to allow officers to conclude that he qualified for the Canada program. There was not information uh, regarding his income and assets. He therefore cannot rely on features of that program to argue that the assessment of this application was unreasonable. The officer assessed the sufficiency of single statement that he has 7,000 available to stay in conjunction with other facts and, and, and factors. And the officer was satisfied that the uh, was not satisfied. <laughs> was not satisfied that the that the funds were reasonable. So that's that's what it is. Uh, finally, Mr. Gupta argues that the officer disregarded contrary evidence regarding positive factors such as his track record of compliance for immigration law, which is not true. However, in addition, being presumed having considered all the evidence before her, the officer expressly indicated that she had considered. Uh, they had considered uh, travel history, and this was not a factor which was identified as a concern, of course. So this was also disregarded. Overall, Mr. Gupta challenged to the application effectively as this court to reweigh the factors and research the facts and conclude that the visa ought to have granted. This is not the role of, the, of this court on judicial review, of course, which is very true. The, the purpose of this uh, judicial review is to look at uh, whether the visa officer followed the proper procedure, whether that uh, decision was reasonable according to the definition of reasonableness. Uh, the court is not there to decide whether the visa should be given or not. If they, if they look at the, the entire process, if it was not followed according to as it should be, they would ask the case to be redetermined by a different visa officer, but they cannot force the same visa officer to issue the visa. The officer's assessment of the application based on information represented was reasonable, and the special cost they didn't. I don't want to go into the rules of, of the cost, but I think the cost was not given to Mr. Gupta. Mr. Gupta was seeking cost. Here it is. Mr. Gupta seeks to order of cost on the basis of delays application for TRB, citing another case, Singh versus Canada. But I think that's that's not uh, you know it, it was not granted. Mr. Gupta's other grounds was including alleged deprivation of TRB risk map, which is uh, which is uh, hyperbole uh, line number 46 the application will never be therefore be dismissed and no question is certified and that is it uh, the court judgment is the application for JR is dismissed with no order as to cost Nicholas McAfee a judge and and that's it mr. Gupta goodbye uh, you know your your request for review was dismissed uh, Anupam Gupta was his Minister of Citizenship and Immigration. This was heard in Edmonton, my city, August 27, 2019. The judgment and reasons dated October 8. And Mr. Gupta appeared on his own, actually, um, on his own behalf. There was no other lawyer here and the Attorney General of Canada. So this is a case. Uh, this is uh, the reason I chose this case uh, is because of two reasons. One is Mr. Gupta was already very elder. Uh, when he was applying uh, for TRV. He's already been here in Canada once. You know, we have no proof whether he stayed six months or less and what was his connection with U.S. But uh, the 
there, there were some findings, there were some alleged uh, findings of misrepresentation, but that, uh, because he said no, he was not uh, removed from U.S., or he did not declare that he had, uh, you know, travel or made entry to U.S., but that concern was not used as a basis of refusal for TRV. The basis of refusal for TRV was his general purpose, his assets, uh, whether he will actually return, uh, and his travel history. Those were the things that were used. Misrepresentation was not uh, was used as, you know, they, they could have charged him for misrepresentation as well, but they did not. They did not use, mis you know, some some cases, many clients ask me, will I be charged for misrepresentation? And I always tell them, it is the discretion of the visa officer. And in this case, they chose not to. Mr. Gupta was not uh, charge for uh, misrepresentation. Otherwise, they he he could have been very easily. He could have been, and Mr. Gupta would have been. But you know, they chose not to. So anyway, so that's that's the case. Uh, I have many more cases uh, to show to you. As you know, most of my time of uh, of the day uh, is spent on reading previous cases in the federal court system relating to immigration refusals. I read those cases so that you don't have to. I can present uh, what happened in those cases by the visa, the behavior and the judgment by the visa officers and the federal courts so that you can avoid those similar mistakes in your own application. That's the purpose of, of all this. But if you have a case of your own or if you want to discuss any particular problem that you are facing with the Canadian immigration system, please email me email me exactly what what is going on so that I can give you my own personal opinion and I can uh, research some similar cases uh, according to your background and so that I can tell you what happened in those cases so that you have a better idea how to how to deal with these problems all right thank you very much uh, your comments are always appreciated and of course if you subscribe to the channel you will be able to see these and similar cases in the future take care